Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to start our fetal echocardiography series. I think it's a highly demanding lecture series. You have requested a lot and I took a lot of time to make these videos. I won't make longer videos, rather I'll go with short videos containing small digestible topics. I'll try to post every day but it will be difficult to make lecture videos every day. For case videos that would be very easy but it's a little bit difficult when you talk about the lecture videos. But I will try my best to be regular and finish it as soon as possible. It will take months to finish the fetal echocardiography but I will cover everything you need. So today we will start with the introductory talks and there will be no disease today. I'll talk about the regular introductory topics that you may need to know or you may already know, but it will be helpful for regular discussion. If we talk about the indications, we divide it into two parts, the fetal indications and maternal indications. The most common fetal indication is the abnormal cardiac screening at the second trimester anomaly scan. You may get abnormal heart rate like badycardia or tachycardia or maybe any irregular beats. You send the patient for a fetal echocardiography. The second commonest one is the presence of any other abnormality. In my practice, when I see any extra cardiac anomaly, I become ready to find congenital heart disease in that patient. Cardiac anomalies are very common association with all the other congenital anomalies. So if you get one, you search for another one. In case of fetal high drops, I usually search for two things, cardiac anomaly, second, fetal anemia. If you see any increased nuchal translucency in the first trimester scan, you should routinely search for the fetal cardiac abnormality even before 18 weeks with transvaginal ultrasound. And in case of twin pregnancies, especially in the monochorionic twin, you should go with the fetal echocardiography. The maternal list is very long. The first one is the maternal diabetes. The second one should be the presence of cardiac anomaly in the previous baby or in the first degree relative of the fetus. If the mother has any disease that makes concern about her physical condition, you should search for cardiac abnormality in the fetus. And obviously, if there is any history of teratogen exposure, you should go for the fetal echocardiography. Now, let's make a summary. If you think this baby is in risk of cardiac abnormality, you should go for fetal echocardiography. That's simple. Now, when to do the fetal echocardiography, we commonly do it in the second trimester anomaly scan time, like in 18 to 22 weeks. This is the regular scanning time, but if needed, you can do it earlier or later. Sometimes the heart is very small, especially in obese patients, it looks very small in 18 to 20 weeks scan. So if we suspect any abnormality or it's needed to evaluate further, we go for follow-ups after one month or after two months, depending on the suspicion. If there is any abnormality suspected earlier, we can also do fetal echocardiography using transvaginal ultrasound before 16 weeks. Nowadays, we are trying to do it earlier also. So the first trimester fetal echocardiography is going to be practiced very soon routinely. Some of the cardiac abnormalities can be diagnosed in early trimester also. So get ready for that. Make sure this 18 to 22 weeks time depends on your machine. Like in my machine, I can do it in 20 weeks with excellent views. But in my previous machine, I don't want to mention the manufacturer. It was very difficult to see the fetal heart even in 22 weeks. So on that center, we prefer to do it on the 24th week of gestation. So it will vary from your machine to my machine. But overall principle is whenever you can see the heart well, you can do the fetal echocardiography. And if you can't see well, do a follow-up scan. The exam duration also varies from patient to patient, depending on the fetal number and presentation. Sometimes it takes around 10 to 20 minutes to finish the exam, but sometimes it takes more than 60 minutes also, especially if there is any complicated congenital heart disease. Moreover, if you want to do 3D ultrasound, you should expect to put more time for the scanning. Now, it's easy to say you an expert in fetal echocardiography, but you have to surrender for your limitations. Like when the cardiac apex is directed downwards, it's very difficult to assess the fetal heart. 
So for the optimal views, we need cardiac apex to be directed toward the anterior maternal wall. But it's not possible always, especially if the baby wants to sleep for a long time. Now the maternal obesity, prone fetal position and leg gestation can also make a detailed heart evaluation very difficult due to the acoustic shadowing, especially during the third trimester. So it may be necessary to examine the patient at a different time if the heart is poorly visualized. We usually tell the patient to have some heavy food and come half an hour to one hour later. Then we scan again and if we fail then we tell the patient to come next week. Like other second or third trimester obstetric ultrasound, we don't need any preparation. But as the fetal presentation and position is very important for scanning the heart, we need to ensure the baby is moving adequately. For that, we tell the patient to have a heavy meal before the exam. It will reduce your time and will make it easy to have cardiac views easily and rapidly. I also recommend empty urinary bladder that helps measure the parameters more accurately and reduce patient discomfort. If you want to assess the cervix, just wait, scan the patient. It will take time to scan the patient and after your scanning, you will see already the urinary bladder is partially or well filled. That will be enough to see the cervix. But don't do an hour of a scan with a full bladder. We do it in supine position, but if needed, you can rotate the patient. We use the regular curvilinear or convex transducer for the transabdominal scan. And if you want to do the TVS, you should use the transvaginal prop. Depending on the obesity and the distance of heart from the transducer surface, you may need to increase or decrease the frequency. Usually for a regular ultrasound, you may not use the machine functions quite regularly, but in case of fetal echo, you may have to change a lot of settings unless you want to use only the fetal heart preset of your machine. Here are four transducers who are my friends for fetal echocardiography scan. This is a machine from G Volusion and this is C16 transducer. This is a convex transducer we use for the abdominal and obstetric ultrasound. This is a good transducer. This is a C29D which has a little increased frequency range. This one is very good for the fetal cardiac scan but with the present machine presets you may not see good views. So you need to adjust a lot. Here is a RM7C volumetric probe. This one gives an excellent view. I regularly do fetal echocardiography not by the C29D but with the RM7C probe. This is good for 3D, 4D and also the fetal echocardiographic views are excellent. This one is a volumetric transvaginal sonography probe. If you want to do TVS, this probe is your companion. It can also take four dimensional views. The scanning technique is like the second or third trimester regular obstetric ultrasound. You just need to find some cardiac views which you may not commonly search for during regular obstetric scan. In our next videos, we'll talk about the fetal cardiac views and there we'll tell you how you can take those views. Whenever you do pregnancy ultrasound like biophysical profile obstetric Doppler or you are doing fetal echocardiography anomaly scan, you should not forget about the regular biometry. All the biometry that you follow or you do depending on your working institution, you should go for them. We have many things to see in a fetal heart. If you practice a lot in normal patients, then you will get familiar with all these topics. We'll see the heart side, we'll see the atrium ventricles. There will be some inflow and outflow vessels coming in or coming out from the atrium ventricles. So we'll see the connections in between the atrium ventricles and those vessels. This is optional but sometimes we may have to go for the functional assessment of the fetal heart. I think most of the people don't do fetal echocardiography for the fear of this functional assessment. But trust me, in most of the cases, you don't need to go for the functional assessment. And it's not very difficult also. And lastly, we go for some fetal cardiac biometry, which we'll talk in our next sessions. We commonly use four imaging modes. On grayscale ultrasound, we actually see whole of the heart. And if you add color Doppler with that, the scan is almost finished. 
you rarely need other modes to access further. But it's worth knowing the M mode and 3D mode to access further. In M mode, we see the motion of the heart and assess any motion abnormality. And lastly, on 3D ultrasound, this is very beginning stage of the 3D till now. We can see the fetal heart cavities. And you can also see the fetal heart in different sections with a single scan. Lastly, we'll end with the reporting format. It will definitely vary from center to center, country to country. Right now, I'm using this format thanks to Dr. Oswal from India who sent us his format and I updated my one taking ideas from his format. Some centers love to give too many measurements in their report. Sometimes that may make our clinicians a little bit confused because they are not well aware of those measurements. So try to make your report a little bit simple. If you want not to make these points, you can also make it descriptive. So it's completely depending on you, your clinician and your institution. Make sure our main aim is to find out the congenital anomalies as much as possible. Clinician is not interested to know whether the heart apex is 45 or 46 degree air from the midline. He or she wants to know this axis is normal or abnormal. If it is abnormal, why you are telling it abnormal? That's it. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our Imaging Study YouTube channel and try to visit imagingstudy.com for more cases. On our next video, we'll try to talk about the fetal cardiac views. Hope to see you there. Have a nice day.